Hey guys, I'm Suetonia, and this time I'm going to go very in-depth with overheating mechanics and explain all the details when it comes to overloading modules. So first of all, let's start with the absolute basics. Many active modules in EVE can be overloaded. This includes every high slot weapon system, most targeted E-War, tackle, propulsion and tank modules. You can see a full list of overloadable modules over at the overheating page on the EVE University wiki. You can overload a module by shift clicking on it, using a hotkey you have set to overload that module, or by clicking on the small green wedge on the top of the module next to the heads up display. While a module is being overheated, it will generate heat on the rack it is located on, either high, mid or low, depending on if it's a high, mid or low slot module. The higher the rack heat, the higher percentage chance that a module will be damaged at the end of the overloaded module cycle. When a module's cycle ends, and if the chance to damage a module does proc, it will do a set amount of damage to that module based on the heat damage attribute found on the item. This number can be reduced by training the thermodynamic skill in game, which reduces this number by 5% per level. Note that almost every module in the game has a total HP value of 40, with a few exceptions for very specific high slot modules such as Intosis Links, Clone Vats and Jump Portal Arrays. Some ship types have a bonus to reducing heat damage taken, such as tactical destroyers and strategic cruisers, and specifically, the E-War Core subsystem found on strategic cruisers also have a reduction in heat damage taken. If a module reaches 100% damage, it will be burnt out and forced offline, and the only way to online it will be to dock at either an NPC station or a friendly citadel, and repair the module from there. If a module is partially damaged by heat, it can be repaired by using nano repair paste in space. This will not work if the module reaches 100% damage and becomes burnt out however. 1 HP of damage on, the, on a module takes 6 seconds to repair, or approximately 2.4 seconds for every 1% damage shown on the module tooltip. This can be lowered down to a max of 3 seconds to repair per HP of damage, or 1.2 seconds per percentage, by training the nanite interfacing skill in the engineering tree. You can also reduce the amount of nanite paste consumed by training the nanite operation skill, which reduces the paste needed by 5% per level. It's also worth pointing out that strategic cruisers also repair modules faster. While a module is being repaired via nanite repair paste, you cannot actually overload another module. Now, an interesting thing about heat is that the chance for a module to become damaged is dependent on how far away it is from the module that was being overloaded. We're going to dive into much more specifics here in a moment, but in general, it's a very good idea to space modules you'll be overheating, often away from other active modules. For example, let's take a look at my Gamma here. Since the MWD is the most important module when it comes to overloading, and does the most heat damage, I want to make sure it's the furthest away from my Warp Disruptor, which is probably the module that I will be overloading the most otherwise in most circumstances. The medium shield extender cannot be overloaded, so it makes the most sense for it to be right next to my micro warp drive. It should also be noted that slots do not loop around. For example, the MWD and Disruptor are three spaces away from each other and not one space away. It's therefore common practice to make sure you space modules out well, put least important or passive modules next to modules you can heat, and split gun groups up so you can get the most out of them. This is the point where we are going to dive into a lot of the behind the scenes mechanics with heat. Don't worry, I know when you see these complex equations and concepts for the first time it can make you want to die inside, but I'm going to go through it with you, dispel some myths along the way and we can see what's really under the hood here. So let's start with more specifics on the rack heat that I mentioned earlier. Most modules in the game will generate 1% of rack heat every second you overload it. The only ex exceptions are micro warp drives and afterburners, which generate 4% of rack heat every second, and armor and shield hardeners, which generate 2% of rack heat every second. This is based on how many modules you have overloaded at the same time and scales linearly. For example, if you have an overloaded afterburner, an overloaded web, and an overloaded scram all at the same time, you'll be generating 6% of uh, mid rack heat per second, 4% from the AB, 1% from the scram, and 1% from the web every second for the total of 6% per second. 
Note that this can be reduced based on the ship type you are flying. You can see the numbers over on the EVE University Wikipedia page, but as an example, a battleship with a heated MWD will actually have 2% uh, of mid rack per second instead of 4% because it has a heat multiplier of 50%. The bigger the ship is, the better its rack heat reduction is generally. It should also be noted that rack heat cools down over time. This is referred to as rack heat dissipation. Rack heat dissipates by the current rack heat percentage multiplied by 0.01. This is the same on every single ship in the game. If you have 100% heat, you'd lose 1% of heat in that rack per second, while at 50% heat you'd lose 0.5% heat per second. Rack heat persists even while you are docked and docking, jumping, switching ships, or ejecting from a ship that doesn't reset rack heat on that specific ship, so keep that in mind. Heat dissipates from the rack even while you are overloading modules, which is why a frigate MWD will only reach 34% heat approximately, instead of 40% as you would expect during the first overloading cycle. Now let's dive into some advanced stuff in Kadesh Priestess's post. We're going to go over a lot of mathematics here to look at the percentage chance that a module is damaged during a heat cycle. You may have heard that having an empty module or an offline module allows you to overheat longer, and that is totally true, and we're going to take a look at that here when we plug in some numbers into the formula that Kadesh shows you, just to see how it works. So Kadesh uses this formula, P equals FH multiplied by FS multiplied by FA. And this gives us the percentage chance that a module will be damaged when a module finishes its overloaded cycle. I'll be using a retribution to demonstrate this so we can go along with it. FH is actually pretty simple. FH is just the heat percentage of the rack that the overloaded module is on when the heated module finishes its cycle. So in this case, if we take a look at a micro warp drive, at the end of the first heated cycle, we have a rack heat of about 34% when it ends. So the number that we're going to be using here is just 34. Next up we have FS. FS is what Kadesh calls slot factor. This is where things get interesting and where offline or empty slots can help. For most practical purposes, you would never have empty or offline mid slots or low slots in general, but many ships have utility high slots that can be fitted with an offline probe launcher or salvager, and many ships might benefit from offlining some modules during a fight. The formula for this is simple. Every fitted and online module we have in the lows, mids and highs are all added together, and then divided by the total number of slots our ship has, including the rig slots. Note that, you, that fitted rigs do not actually count for the first part, so having empty rig slots will not help with reducing heat damage chances. For our retribution example, we have 5 fitted highs, 2 fitted mids, and 5 fitted lows, giving the first number a total value of 12, and the second part of the equation will be 14, which includes the 2 rig slots that we have. So we will divide 12 by 14 to get a final number of about 0.86 here. Now the final part is where things get a little more complicated and requires us to do a little bit of digging. This is what Kadesh calls FA, which is heat attenuation of that specific ship for that specific rack to the power of how far away it is from the overloaded module. Uh, every ship in the game actually has a hidden stack called heat attenuation for each specific rack one for high, one for mid and one for low. You can find this by looking at a database dump the easiest way to find it is by looking at the ship stats and selecting the raw stats function in Python fitting assistant or Pytha. If you scroll down you'll see the three different values for heat attenuation for each rack. This is loosely based on how many slots that a ship has per rack, but it can be completely different on some ships since it hasn't been changed when some ships have been rebalanced, so you'll probably have to look at each individual ship to see the correct attenuation values for it. In our retribution example, we have an attenuation of 0.71 for our high rack and low rack, and 0.25 for our mid rack. So let's plug in our numbers for our retribution's micro warp drive. P equals FH multiplied by FS multiplied by FA. We know the FH value will be 34, the 34% 34 on our mid slot rack. The FS value will be 0.86, which is the number of online modules we have on our ship divided by the total number of module and rig slots. The FA value will be 1. Our attenuation value is 0.25, but since it's to the power of 0, since it is the module we over are overloading, 
it's zero spaces away from itself obviously, and whenever you have something to the power of zero, the final number will always be one. So the percentage chance we have of damaging our Retribution's MWD on the first cycle is 34, the 34% from our rack heat, multiplied by 0.86, the slot factor, and then multiplied by 1 from the attenuation factor. This all gives us a final chance of 29.24% chance of causing heat damage to our MWD when we're overloading for the first cycle. Let's take a look at what the chance is that we damage our warp disruptor when we're overloading the micro warp drive for the first cycle. While the first two numbers are the same, the heat rack value is going to be the same, so is the slot factor value. The only thing that's going to be different is the attenuation value. Uh, we know this is 0.25 by looking it up in Python, so we reduce 0.25 to the power of 1 since it's one space away from the overheated micro warp drive. This would give us a percentage chance of 7.31% 7 of being damaged by the overloading micro warp drive during its first cycle. If the Retribution had an imaginary third mid slot, it would only have a 1.8% chance of being damaged, which would be 0.25 to the power of 2. Now let's go back to the chance the MWD has of being damaged during the first cycle, but instead this time, let's offline the festival launcher on my Retribution. This will change the second number in Kadesh's formula, the slot factor. We go from a multiplier of 0.86 from 12 total online modules divided by the 14 slots and rigs that it has total to a multiplier of 0.78 from now only having 11 total online modules divided by the 14 slots and rig slots on the retribution. If we plug that all into our formula, the chance of our MWD being damaged drops from a 29.24% chance that we saw earlier to a chance of 26.52% chance, giving us a lower chance that it damages itself. While this number does sound unimpressive in this isolated scenario, let's assume the worst case. Let's say we have 100% heat on our mid slot rack. How much of a difference would just having one offline utility high in the retribution make? Uh, 100 multiplied by 0 0.86, which was our original slot factor, uh, gives us a final chance of 86% chance that the micro warp drive will damage itself at the end of the cycle. Uh, with the offline firework launcher, that drops down to 78% which is actually a massive improvement. If you take a look at this in another way, if the mid slot rack is 100%, then the MWD is probably gonna burn out on the next cycle. And by offlining that high, it goes from a 14% chance of not burning out to a 22% chance of not burning out, which is actually better than a 50% improvement. If we ran this experiment, say, 100 times, uh, with the online festival launcher, we would only have 14 times with a, where Michael Bright doesn't burn out, whereas with the offline firework launcher, we would have 22 times where the Michael Wolf Drive didn't burn out, and so we would have 50% more successes. So it's worth keeping this in mind. If you're flying a ship that has online modules that you aren't using in combat, especially in a difficult fight, such as a combat probe launcher on your ship, you could potentially offline it during a fight to improve how long you can heat. You could also take a look at certain specific situations. For example, if you have an energy neutralizer on your ship and you're fighting a passive shield tank drifter, it's very unlikely that the energy newt will be useful in your fight against it, so you could consider offlining that newt to be able to overheat your modules longer. And also, in a large ditch attempt to escape a kiter, let's say you're caught by a long range kiter like a Imperial Navy Slicer for example and you're in a brawling ship, you've been caught long enough that even if you do catch them from this point on, you're still not going to win the fight against them, so what you could do is you could actually just offline all of your damage mods and your guns, so then that way you might be able to just overheat your micro warp drive and get away from them, because they won't be able to keep up with you without risking burning out their own micro warp drive. So that's my video explaining all of the mechanics to do with heat and overloading. I hope this video was informative and cleaned up some of the myths involved with overloading. I'm trying to grow this personal channel of mine, so I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and leave a like on the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.